Hello and welcome to another one of these short films. Alan's working the uh, camera today so I might spin it round on him and you might actually get to see who Alan is. Uh, he does a lot of work with me and uh, you often hear me refer to him but you very rarely see him. So I might be a little surprised. Um, <coughs> this is another film about wildlife gardening and uh, we're going to start getting into the depths of it now. Um, now our obsession with manicuring and controlling our gardens is a reflection on our obsession with controlling our environment and we're never going to do that. I want to work your minds differently. I want you to start looking at your gardens as many nature reserves and not just things, entities that are just there for your enjoyment bring more wildlife in, it's going to animate the space and you're going to get more enjoyment from it. So just have a think about that. It's not room, it's not for everybody, but there's room for manicuring techniques. Uh, doing too much is as bad as doing too little. Um, so I'm not necessarily trying to convert all the manicurists. I'm just trying to get everybody to maybe garden in a slightly different way. Uh, and bring more into their gardens. It's easier with large gardens than small, but as we work through these films, I'll explain how. Uh, we, you can make a small garden just as productive for wildlife as a large garden. I'm not the only person talking about this stuff. The RSPB have got a number of free fact sheets. If you go on to RSPB Homes to Wildlife, there's some fact sheets you can download free there, and they pretty much talk about the same stuff as I do. I've also uh, been writing articles about wildlife gardening since about 1999 and uh, there's over a hundred now and we're going to have that material put together in an e-book that you'll be able to download and buy uh, in the near future. I'm also uh, a recognised Royal Horties Cultural Society speaker um, and we're looking to do more talks on this face to face with a real audience. <coughs> um, in that talk I actually talk about what influences uh, somebody to be a good wildlife gardener. Uh, that's the social influences and the psychology. Now, the most interesting thing I think we do is we make a wildlife radio programme. And on that programme you'll very often hear me talking about Alan working the mic. You can't see him, he's sat actually behind the camera today. But what that programme actually does, it actually gets us engaged with the environment. Now as a race, the human race, we're losing the ability to see what is right in front of us. And if we just open our eyes, it's all there. Wildlife is struggling, but there's more wildlife there than we notice, because we're just walking past and not uh, taking any notice. Now that radio programme, that's taken us all over the country. It's taken us down to Exmoor for the Red Deer Rut, taken us to the Somerset Levels. Um, some people may remember Bill Oddie on the BBC doing a film about the, the big cloud of starlings. And we went down there and uh, did a radio uh, programme on this roost, starling roost. You have to work a bit harder on radio uh, to get the, that picture across in people's minds. Uh, but that, that's the fun of it. We went down to the Isle of Wight, uh, red, uh, chasing the red squirrels, and uh, we've even done stuff in the Peak District. And what that does, that programme, that actually gets us out there in the thick of it, and we have a, uh, get totally absorbed in, in making the programme, and then when we come back to our gardens, we then replicate what we've seen and learnt, the patterns that Mother Nature is... Uh, is showing out in the wilds and then we relate it back to ordinary gardens and um, if you actually go on to um, uh, SoundCloud it's a, a website on the internet if you go on to SoundCloud I've got a, a stream there where you can see podcasts of uh, or hear podcasts of some of our radio work so it's all there available but um, and the other thing the radio gets us to do when we're out there making this program we, we try and document ourselves when we're working and we're taking photographs now again taking photographs 
that opens your eyes to what is around. Now it doesn't matter whether or not you are you have a good camera, whether you consider consider yourself a good photographer. Have a go. Even if you produce awful photographs, you will actually if you go for a walk with a camera to try and take photographs, you will actually see more than if you just go for a walk and go marching on past things. So um, the message of this short film is open your eyes. It's all there for the, uh, for the taking. Uh, and all the patterns are there, you know, color schemes, you know, it's happening out there in the wild. Just go out there and have a look.